Abraham Lincoln. The name conjures an image of a tall, lanky man wearing a crazy big top hat, delivering the Gettysburg Address. But Lincoln was more than just a historical icon. He was a man born into a humble frontier life, a self-taught lawyer with a sharp wit. But most notably of all, He's in movies now. The film industry is obsessed with making movies about people and situations from so long ago. In 2012, there were three movies released about Abraham Lincoln, which is only the second most interesting fact about him and the entertainment industry. You know the first one. These three movies vary greatly in quality, but it's important to note that two of them involve slaying monsters, which is interesting because I don't think he was really known for that during his presidency. I failed history though, maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I would probably be more inclined to vote for you if you were known for killing zombies or vampires. I hate those things. Okay, so the three movies I'm talking about are Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, and Abraham Lincoln vs. Zombies. And I'm so excited to talk to you about them. I'm gonna start with the best and most boring one, just real quick. The film Lincoln, directed by Steven Spielberg, was nominated for 12 Academy Awards, and it won Daniel Day-Lewis his third Best Actor Oscar, which I think is too many. I think you should be able to win one of those things, and then you're done. You shouldn't be able to win more. Start aiming lower. We get it. Okay, that's that's enough about that one. I don't want to waste my time on that. Let's get into the juice of this topic and start talking about Abraham Lincoln Van- it's gotten so gloomy and dark. What happened to my lighting? Clouds. Clouds happened. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter was based on the novel of the same name and produced by Tim Burton. So you know this is about to slap hard. It's 1800 and something and Child Abe stands up for his slave friend, leading to him being whipped and his father losing his job. Since Abraham's father isn't able to pay off his debt anymore, this guy Jack Bartz is like, you're gonna have to pay it off another way. Which is spooky. He's being spooky. That night, Abraham sees Jack Bartz looming over his mother's body and the next morning, his mother falls ill and eventually dies. Oh my god, he killed his mom. Abraham's father makes him promise not to want to take vengeance over it and just move on. And he agrees until his father dies nine years later. Now it's fair game. It's important to note that he's not yet the president. He's just some dude named Abraham Lincoln, which you never see these days. Where are all the Abrahams at? Tap in down below. Let's hear it. So Abe follows Jack to a dock and shoots him in the face. But guns were not that powerful at the time. You know the 1800s. So a huge bullet is just lodged in Jack's face, but he seems dead, so we must be okay now. We can all move on. And then the scariest thing I've ever seen happens. Watch this. Brace yourself. I was having myself a glass of red wine when I watched that scene, and I lost over half the glass when that moment happened. That was horrifying. Rest in peace the white shirt I was wearing. Then Abraham gets horribly beaten up by the vampire strength Jack has. He's a vampire. I don't know if I really established that with you. Fear not though, Abraham is soon rescued by this guy, who we meet the next morning as Henry Sturges. Henry gives us all of the exposition we need. Jack Bartz is a vampire. Henry Sturges hunts vampires. And because Jack Bartz is still out there roaming free, Abraham is gonna get Get Henry to train Abraham to become a vampire hunter like him. May the movie begin. While training his strength to hunt vampires, Henry gives Abraham an axe and tells him to picture a tree as being Jack Bart's. You know to rile up his anger. He killed his mom. And then this happens. <laughs> I know you're angry, man, but cool it a little bit. That was a tree. Think of the environment. And that poor axe can't withstand that sort of use long term. It just won't work. So what makes this not only a vampire movie, but also an Abraham Lincoln movie is the tie-in to slavery in the Civil War. Won't you believe it? Henry tells Lincoln that the vampires target slaves, so it's up to them to keep this nation a nation of men and not monsters. As if the vampires killing the slaves was the first monstrous part of the process, and not the enslavement of people to begin with. Interesting. Abraham Abraham, now finished with training, moves to a small town and lays low, hoping to kill Jack Bartz once and for all. And that's when Mary Elizabeth Winstead makes an entrance, looking as dashing as ever. Okay, Ramona Flowers. I see you, Ramona Flowers. She plays Mary Todd, which history tells us becomes his wife. Spoiler alert, history. Thanks a lot. Now, this movie is very pretty and nice to look at, but some of the moments can be kind of jarring. And the vampires are horrifying in this movie. What happened to a big black cloak and really gelled hair? Can we bring that back? This is too much. So Abraham kills his first vampire. It's one ordered for him to kill by his old friend Henry. Remember Henry? Henry? 
Why did they do that? I keep spilling wine everywhere. Okay, that was vampire number two, but worry not. He does eventually put on his token top hat. I went to Party City this morning and all I could get was this hat. It's not tall enough. I'm gonna make it taller in post. Look at how tall my hat is. This is crazy. I look like a dork, so I'm taking it off. Abraham pulls it off though. So after those vampire slayings, he officially starts dating Mary Todd Elizabeth Winstead. And he just tells her what's up. Each and every night, I go out. Hunting vampires. What the heck are you talking about? Honest Abe? Okay. 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 Also, she stands on his hat to kiss him. What were hats made of in the 1800s? Is his hat made of wood? Mary goes in for a kiss kiss, but Abe kind of moves his chic away in a sad to see way. Because his lifestyle is too dangerous. It would never work. Abraham Lincoln chooses vampire hunting inventions over dating Ramona Flowers. Like an idiot, Abe's old slave friend Will Johnson from the first scene of the movie, you remember, comes to see him at his job saying he's on the run because he's been freeing slaves using the Underground Railroad. Real life reference and when trying to help Will, they end up in a fight on the street and both end up in a jail cell where Mary Todd gives some wise words to Abraham that makes him want to speak out against slavery, which eventually makes him, say it with me now, want, want to, to run, run for, for the president, president of the United, United States. States. Henry Sturgis returns to Abraham saying it's finally time to kill Jack Bartz. This is what the whole movie's built up to. This is the vampire for him. So Abe sneaks up on Jack, which leads to the funniest line delivery of the whole movie. Abraham fucking Lincoln. And then they fight in the middle of a horse stampede. This is the wildest fight scene I've ever seen in a movie. I can't believe I'm really watching this right now. They're hopping from horse to horse. There's dust everywhere. The horses probably have no idea what's going on. Jack catches a horse mid stride and hammer throws it at Abraham Lincoln, which is a crazy sentence to say. The VFX team probably giggled the entire time they worked on this movie, and I'm happy for them. How do you ragdoll a horse to hit a man? How do you do it? They fall down a cliff and Abe finally defeats Jack, but not before Jack gives him a final warning. And they'll be coming for you now. Ask your friend Henry. Okay, but that transition kind of goes crazy though. 10 out of 10, for real. Also, Henry's a vampire? What? So we learned this, and we learned that vampires can't kill other vampires. Vampires 101 people, come on, you read books? And that's why Henry hired Abraham to do all his dirty work for him. Abraham killed a lot more vampires up until he finally got to kill Jack. So that's why Henry was just a coward and didn't tell him. I'm sure we could have worked something out, Henry. In a flashback, we see the day that Henry Sturgis was turned into a vampire, the same time his wife was killed by those vampires, and that's why he's gotten Abraham to do all this stuff for him. I mean, I guess that's fine, but... You could have just told me, man. That sucks. I would have helped. They're cool, but Abraham leaves. This is heavy news. So Abraham puts vampire hunting behind him and he proposes to marry Todd. They get married and live happily ever after. The end. Okay, not really. That's only the first half of the movie. But all the loose ends, they're tied. Why do we have to keep going? Everything's good. So Abraham is invited to a ball in New Orleans by some of Jack Bartz's vampire friends. And Will Anderson was kidnapped, so he has to go, which is so annoying. He just got married and everything's going fine. So he gets there and he sees everyone eating their dance partners. Holy shit. So Abe gets in and all the vampires gang up on him. He does a pretty good job of killing a few of them, but eventually is captured and spoken to by them. They want him to kill Henry and if he doesn't agree to, they'll kill Will. But then they narrowly escape and things are fine for now. They can put all this behind them. Okay, anyway. Back at home, he officially sets aside his vampire hunting ways and chooses to fight with words instead. You know where this is going. And he grows a beard! Yes, Abraham! It's you! I knew it was you! There's a huge time jump here. He signs the Emancipation Proclamation. He does other things. You remember history. Everything seems fine, but then this happens. Precious little one. What's your name? Lily. I'm so sorry, Abraham. The vampires invade the White House via a maid and kill Abraham's son via vampire bite, paralleling the real world death of Abraham Lincoln's son of typhoid fever at age 11.
I don't like that one bit. You can fictionalize any president killing vampires, sure, but to reframe his son's death like this just seems wrong, but in kind of a hilarious way. Like, can they do this, really? Tim Burton, explain yourself. This is how the vampires get back at Abe for everything. Just like at the beginning when they took his mom, now it's war. Now I'm not playing games. I'm getting riled up, I'm taking this off. And now we enter Gettysburg. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, we're watching history go down right in front of our eyes, but this time, vampires. Spoiler alert, it's not going well. We're losing pretty bad. Back at home, Abraham has an epiphany. Our men have no way of defending themselves against this enemy. Our bullets are useless, our bayonets are as powerless as this fork. This... Oh. Forks. Forks should do it. No, it's the silver in the forks, actually. Nice try, though. Note that silver is one of the notorious weaknesses of vampires. You've seen movies. They gather all the silver they can and melt it down to create weapons to finally defeat these mother vampires. The vampires are prepping for the war as well, but they don't need to train, you know. They've got the whole vampire thing down by now. Also, look at this transition. Or they're dead. They had a lot of fun making this movie, and I love that. That's what it's all about. So the big fight happens on a train transporting the silver weapons. The vampires are trying to intercept the train because they know of the silver. It's a whole thing. You're on board. We've been talking this whole time. This is the coolest fight scene I've ever seen in anything ever. It's really well shot and choreographed. Like, look at these speed ramps. Okay, Abe. I see you, Abe. Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. More like Babraham Lincoln Hot Guy Hunter. Something like that. The vampires in this movie are such needless show-offs. Like, watch this. Right at the climax of the fight, the vampires find out there's no silver on the train. It's just rocks. They've been double-crossed by Honest Abe himself. But the drama is not over. The vampires set fire to the tracks up ahead, so they're put into an Uncharted 2 Chapter 1 situation, jumping train cars with very high stakes. In the height of the chaos, Abe kills the biggest threat of the movie, I forget his name, it's not important, with a silver pocket watch. It's poetic for reasons I won't get into. Watch the movie. It's cool. They Nathan Drake to safety and go where the silver was actually being transported. The Underground Railroad. History mentioned. That's right, while all of this went down, Mary Todd led the ex-slaves through the Underground Railroad to bring the silver weapons to Gettysburg. Isn't history awesome? We need to put vampires in the history books because this is already sticking so much better than anything I was ever taught. So the Battle of Gettysburg commences and we turn the tide and change history using the silver weapons we made earlier. Also, there's a fork callback right at the end of the war. Remember the fork? That's fun. After the war, Henry Sturgis is trying to convince Abraham to let him make him immortal. That way they can thrive together forever as a team of good vampires. Abraham is not down. And besides, he's busy. He's gonna go catch a play with Mary Todd at Ford's Theater. Wait a minute. That's where the thing happens. The fact that John Wilkes Booth still kills Abraham Lincoln at the end of this movie is hilarious. That's the funniest thing I've ever seen. While researching this movie, I saw that one of the top search engine results was, is Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter a true story? No, you idiot. The film did fine in the box office and was met with pretty positive reviews overall. Listen to what this guy has to say. I liked it and bit a lot. I watched the movie in early age of 13, 14 years, which I liked, and Lincoln Park's song was my ringtone. Upon revisiting the stuff now at 26 year old, it was quite good. Not best, but it should not heavily criticism as they faced at the time. It doesn't have a layered writing though. It's a bless to watch for sore eyes, which ache for some good action movie with simple plot line. What? Okay, now let's talk about the worst Abraham Lincoln movie in 2012, Abraham Lincoln vs. Zom. For the record, I did not find this movie. This movie found me. I was at Dollar General like a normal American person, and I found this for $5. I have it on DVD. It hardly exists anywhere else. And obviously I had to buy it. It's Abraham Lincoln vs. Zombies. Upon putting the DVD into my Xbox One to watch, I was met with 10 minutes of previews for other movies this production company has made. They're called The Asylum, and it's got some questionable branding right off the bat. In 100 films, we destroyed the planet. Weird thing to brag about, but I'm listening. 
thing. One of the previews I was practically forced to watch on this DVD was for Titanic 2. Why would you make this movie? You can't just take a real life tragedy and slap a 2 next to it for your next blockbuster hit. Ladies and gentlemen, gear up for the movie of the summer, Hindenburg 2. It happened again. So I'm looking at their most recent films and realize that their whole business model is creating movies that look like other popular movies. The Little Mermaid, Transmorphers, Ape vs. Mecha Ape. That one looks interesting actually. So all this makes sense. The movie Abraham Lincoln vs. Zombies is a cash grab because the same year they released Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter. Interesting. This goes deep. It's crazy that some people dedicate their whole lives to the craft of acting or cinematography just to end up working on a movie that's a copycat of another inevitably better movie. But anyway, let's talk about Abraham Lincoln vs. I'm not gonna spend too long on this movie because it's kind of unbearable. Let's begin. So Child Abe walks in on his dad who just shot himself because he couldn't shoot his zombie wife slash Abraham's mom. I couldn't do it. This is how we open Jesus Christ. I just sat down. Look at that high quality title card. That's how you know it's a good movie. When you kind of can't see part of the text, it's perfect. Then there's a huge time jump where Abraham is already president. I'm so happy we're skipping all the foreplay of his childhood pre-president days meeting Mary Todd. We're in the meat of it and we're only three minutes in. So a bunch of their men, except for one conveniently, were reportedly eaten by the Confederates. That's probably bad news. They hear everything that happened from the one survivor, but just write him off as insane. They've never heard anything like this, so it must not be true. And I find this weird because we just saw the flashback of Abraham Lincoln killing his zombie mom. Like, zombies are in this universe. And yeah, that was 20 years ago, but it seems like no one else has ever seen this before. Abraham Lincoln is the only one that has even an inkling of what's going on, which is really unusual for a president. It all makes very little sense, but we should play along for the asylum. They're trying to make a real movie. It's so cute. Let's just play along. Let's play along. They gear up to go and find out what's really going on, right as the one survivor, who just gave all of the exposition in the world, turns into a zombie with some crazy weird VFX contact situation. It does not look good. He doesn't even bite the people right next to him. He just wanders off and runs around in a haphazard way. It's weird. And there's a camera shake added in post that I do not care about at all. There's no need for that extra motion. I'm sure it was to make things look a bit more intense, but the music here is doing all of the work. This would look hilarious without music. Also, the whole movie is color graded to have this stale, almost monochrome look to it. White skin tones almost read as gray, probably to do some of the work of making the zombies look more zombie-like. I don't care for it. It's already hard to watch pacing-wise. Take away all the color, I'm on my iPhone. Anyway, one of the president's men is being eaten by the zombie, but luckily, Abe is there just in time to swoop in and save the day once and for all. Is he still running? Why is this taking so long? Why is this in such slow motion with so many angles? There's no reason for it. Okay, CGI, I see you. That almost looks good. This movie is truly a hard watch, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it, but here are some of the highlights. Abe dons his famous top hat. We all love it. They get to where they're going with intention of dealing with these walking dead people, but there's a shootout. You know war. Once again, no one seems to know what's going on except for Abe Lincoln. So during the shootout, when a zombie walks up, this happens to one of the men. Goes there. Stand fast. Identify yourself. What kind of idiot do you have to be to do that? Who goes there? Okay, alright, okay, alright. If your eyes look like that, I'm at least gonna stay socially distanced. Six feet, please. Get away from me. Also, we're shooting guns? It's wartime. Why are you walking up in here? You must be a zombie. I'm gonna shoot you now. It's so funny that no one knows why that just happened. To them, they just watched one of their men get attacked by a random person, and the President of the United States shot both of them in cold blood. That's hilarious. Also, look at that clean CGI work. I really love how the blood goes right over his head instead of just out. Really great work, you guys. Take the rest of the day off. These are some of the most incompetent men serving our country. They seem to barely know how to handle their guns.
So a lot happens, can you imagine? But it's all very boring. Even the zombie moments are so slow, oh my god. Spoiler alert, if you were gonna watch this terrible, horrible, no good, very bad movie, stop watching now. At the end of the movie, Abraham is scratched and infected by Mary Todd herself. He kills her, and for a different reason, he has to send a message to the John Wilkes Booth. You know him? Ah. Lewis! George! I love how fate works in these movies. It always comes back to JWB, baby. Through that letter, John Wilkes Booth knows exactly where Lincoln's gonna be the following night. Any guesses? I'll wait. Ford's Theater. It's gonna be at Ford's Theater. It's where Abraham Lincoln dies in every universe. He can't escape it. God, that movie was so unbearable. No redeeming qualities except for Abraham Lincoln's mode of death. Via John Wilkes Booth. So what are the takeaways from learning about the Abraham Lincoln Cinematic Universe? I'm glad you didn't ask. For one, I learned that history can be fun when you add monsters and stuff. For two, I learned that Daniel Day-Lewis has three Best Actor Academy Awards, which is too many even if you are good. Chill out, stop working, you did it. And finally, I learned not to take yourself too seriously. In an age where daily life can be packed with such pain and sorrow, it's important to look at yourself and ask the real questions like, how is Asylum allowed to do this? Copying upcoming blockbusters to trick people into watching your hastily made bad movies. I wanna see Transformers, not your stupid Transformers. What the fuck is that? I read sometimes they make their crew work 22 hours a day just to pump out their movies. They're not protected by the same unions as regular movies are, other than SAG-AFTRA, which I guess is fine, but don't overwork your people, your movies are bad, and they claim to have never lost money on a movie. How is that possible? The Martian? Try Martian Land. Cocaine Bear? Nice try. I'm watching Meth Gator. That's a real movie. I bet it's fine. They made Sharknado for crying out loud. That was them. This is besides the point, but the third Sharknado movie is called Sharknado. Nato 3. Oh, hell no. That's pretty funny. I like it. I like the title of that movie. They can't keep getting away with it. <laughs>